This video is going to go to going to go over number eight and nine from your Algebra One review packet. Uh, what is the greatest common factor of the monomials 21xy to the fourth z squared and 77x cubed y squared? Remember what greatest common factor is whenever you're starting this problem. Uh, if you had to find the greatest common factor of 10 and 25, what we would do is we would list out the factors of each of those. So 10 is 1 and 10. It also can be div evenly divisible by 5 and 2. And 25, it'll list out 1 and 25 and 5 times 5. So the greatest factor that they have in common would be 5. You're going to do the same thing here. So I suggest that for each monomial, you write it out, breaking it down into factors. So this first one, how can I break up 21 x, y to the fourth, z to the squared. Well, 21 can be broken up into 1, 21, or 3, and 7. So 3 times 7 gives me 21. x can't be broken up, it's just x. y to the fourth can't be broken up. It can be written out as y times y times y times y. Now, you may not need to do this step, but if you're struggling with this problem, this will help you. And then z squared can be broken up into z times z. So all I did was expand this monomial out into all of its factors. Let's do 77 then. 77x cubed y squared. How can that be written out? Well, think about the factors of 77. 77 can be broken up into 7 times 11. I can't break those up any farther. These are prime numbers. Otherwise, I would. So 7 times 11, that covers my 77. x cubed can be written out as x times x times x and y squared can be written out as y times y. So now that you have all of the factors listed for each monomial, the greatest common factor is going to be made up of <clears throat> all the things that they have in common. So look for what repeats. I have a 7 in both of those. That means there's going to be a 7 in my GCF. I have an x in both of those, so I'm just going to write that x once as part of my answer because it exists in both. Now take a look here. They both have a y times a y, so they both have y, 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 or y squared, so I'm going to times it by y squared. There's nothing else that they both have in common, so your GCF is going to be made up of those three things. 7xy squared is your GCF. Remember, greatest common factor means you're looking at what divides those terms. Your GCF is C7xy squared. Let's take a look at number 9 then, the LCM, the least common multiple. Remember what that is. If I have 10 and 25, the lowest common multiple that they have, what I would do instead of writing out the factors is I would write out the multiples. 10 times 1 is 10, 10 times 2 is 20, 10 times 3 is 30, 10 times 4 is 40, 10 times 5 is 50, 10 times 6 is 60. I could keep going. Then I would write out the multiples of 25. 25 times 1 is 25. 25 times 2 is 50. I can stop right there. You see, with my greatest common factor in the orange, I wanted the number that they had the greatest in common when you divided them. But with the lowest common multiple, I want the first number that repeats. That is a multiple of both of them. So 50 is a multiple of 10 and 25. 50 is your LCM. So remember, GCF, you're breaking it apart. You're looking for the factors. LCM, multiple, we want to write out the multiples. So what is the least common multiple of the monomials given here? Well, I would just start even with just the 18 and the 30. We have variables with them, but let's just figure out what coefficient should be on our answer. What is the lowest common multiple of these two numbers? Looking at your options, be logical here. Is 6 a multiple of these two numbers? No, it's a factor. We're not asked to find the greatest common factor. We're asked to find the lowest common multiple. So just from looking at this problem, if you think about it, you should be able to rule out C and D because I want a multiple that is a, a multiple of 18 and 30. As you start to write them out, 18 times 1 is 18, 18 times 2 is 36, 18 times 3 is 54, that's 72. There's my 90. Why am I stopping there? Because I'm looking at my options. So it's probably going to be 90. 30 times 1 is 3. 
30 times 2 is 60. 30 times 3 is 90. There's the lowest number that they have in common. So right away, I can rule out C and D. Now I have to decide between A and B. Think about just part of it. Think about just the U, just think about the V's maybe. V and V cubed. What's the lowest common multiple? If these were denominators of a fraction, what would you want to get them both to become? Okay? We always want to multiply by something, so we never want to go smaller, we want to go larger. I can easily get this V to become something more than V, right? But a V cubed, I can't make that smaller. I can't make that a V squared or a V unless I'm dividing. And I don't want to divide, I want to multiply. So just looking at the V's, I can get them both to become V cubed easily. I would just multiply this one by V squared, right? Let's look at our U's. The U's, I have a U to the fourth and a U to the fourth. Well, that's easy. They're already the same, so I'm going to have a U to the fourth and my least common multiple. The last one then to look at is my W to the fourth and my W cubed. If you're multiplying, what would you want to multiply by to get them to be both the same? Well, again, I can't really make this smaller. I can't have less W's unless I divide by a W. So I can multiply this one by a W and get them both to be W to the fourth. Your lowest common multiple with variables actually is going to be the variable with the greater power. It has to have all the variables that are up here. So I'm going to put that 90 with u to the fourth, v cubed, w to the fourth. There's 8 and 9 for you. If you have more questions, if this still doesn't make sense for you, to you, please ask your teacher.